What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp speed modeling tutorial for you. So in this video I go through and I create a modern house in SketchUp and uh, I guess the twist on this one is I actually went in and I did just about everything wrong and I had to go back and fix it but I figured this would be a good video to talk about some of those things about what you should be doing as you model so that making changes in the future is easier. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this video, my goal was to really make a video that I could actually take over to Lumion and uh, render. So I was really trying to create something where where I could kind of furnish it over there. But I wanted to do this uh, video, first of all, to kind of show you how not to do things because uh, I was kind of lazy in this, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in just a minute. But in this video, what I did is I'm creating this modern house model. So you can see what I did is I started off and I just roughed out these shapes, and then I'm basically d dividing up the different edges on the faces, and then I'm using the extension Lattice Maker, which I'm sure a bunch of you have seen before. Um, there's other extensions like maybe Valley Architects has some extensions that might be good for that as well. But um, all I'm doing in this case is I'm roughing out the space. And this is partially where I'm starting to make some of my mistakes, is I should have started off and I should have given these walls some thickness, and I also should have grouped them. And I also should have grouped the roof geometry, and I really didn't. I really just came in here and started modeling, which is not the right way to do that. But, um, so we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. But what I did then is I came in and I roughed out the size of the fireplace, and I and what I did is I just uh, used the rectangle tool to push pull that up and then I offset it out and I push pulled it up. And so th this particular model has kind of a outcropping that's where the um, where the stove burner is and then there's cabinets built into this wall. And so what I did is I drew this shape up and then I just used the push pull tool to kind of cut this hole. And I'm trying to kind of apply materials as I go and what I should be doing and what you should do is you should group geometry as you go because you can see I'm kind of leaving this as raw geometry. I was in a little bit of a hurry and what that does to me a little bit later is that actually cre creates a problem because all my geometry merges together which is exactly why you shouldn't do that. Um, um, for my cabinets though, what I did is I split these spaces up and then I'm, I'm creating each cabinet door or drawer as a component and then I'm copying it. So you can see how I'm creating these as copies. That way when I apply a material or I make a change to one or the other one, um, the others change as well. And you can see how on the back side of this wall I'm already having problems with my geometry merging together. And again, what I should have done is I should have grouped all of my exterior walls separately. Um, so whenever you're modeling like this, really try to group that geometry as you go. Don't be lazy like I was because it really creates a lot of extra work. But you can see since these are components in here and I apply that, um, that wood material inside of one component, that material also goes along the other components as well. So it means I don't have to make that change over and over and over again. And you can see how I'm just using the move tool in copy mode to copy those doors over. And so I'm just doing that again on this back wall um, to create these doors and then we'll add a wood paneling material on the wall as well. Um, and I'm just kind of creating the pull holes as I go and then I'm just applying a wood material to the back side of the wall. And I went ahead and went in here and applied kind of a stone material. And really when I'm modeling for Lumion, what I do is I try to apply materials um, based on what I know that I'm going to apply over there. So I'm going to replace most of these materials in Lumion because those materials are a lot more detailed. So what I'm trying to do is I'm really just trying to apply a different material to each face that may need a different material in Lumion, if that makes sense. And you can see how one of the other issues I'm running into here, because I didn't group this geometry, is I'm having to go in and manually fix all the geometry in the roof and move everything over. So I should have put that all in a group to begin with, and I just didn't. So please learn from my mistake or you're gonna to have to spend an extra half hour or so fixing mistakes like I had to in this model. But you can see how I'm applying a carpet material to these two carpets. I'm applying kind of a stone material inside the uh, fireplace. And again, that's just to kind of break that up so that I can apply that, um, apply a different material to it within Lumion. And you can see how I'm having to go back and g add thickness to these walls. So think the single thickness walls don't necessarily work super well in SketchUp, so you get a whole lot of merging issues and other things like that. I should have modeled these with thickness to begin with, but you can go back and fix them. It just becomes a lot of extra work. And so what I'm doing here is just the same thing where I'm just adding in these cabinets on the back 
And I'm moving these over a little bit because I'm going to add kind of a hallway in between these two sections. But the other thing I'm doing is I'm adding my uh, counter material on top of this. So I'm just going in and making sure that I have the materials that I applied that I want. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to add the stainless um, wall covering over here as well as adjusting the stainless material that goes on the counter and then I'll add some shelves up above that and so the shelves when I add them in I model them in with some thickness but I also make them components so again when I change one the other changes as well and so you can see on now what I'm having to do is I'm having to use section cuts and everything else to go in and fix this geometry where I'm trying to cut a hole for the wall um, because what I want is I want kind of a passageway in here but because of the way I set everything up, it's all raw geometry, and that's really hard to add in here. You can see how I'm having to adjust thicknesses and play around with things and erase out extra geometry because of the way that I set this up. And maybe I'll do kind of a slower video talking about that model setup. You can get some of that by watching my layout videos, but it's really important to group your geometry as as you go. You can see how on this other backside over here, now I've got holes in my back wall where my cabinets are because again, I didn't group that exterior wall. I know I'm repeating myself, but it was a pretty big mistake that I had to go in and fix and I probably did end up spending about a half hour just fixing miscellaneous geometry in the back. And so once I did that, I came in here and I added glass in the little partition between the two rooms over here. And uh, I was actually pretty lazy because you can see on the left hand side when this model is actually done there's actually no way to get into that room um, and again I'm just creating something that I can kind of test out and play with with a rendering program so it's not the end of the world but you can see what I'm doing now is I'm coming in here and I'm adding a thickness to the slab below um, because that's actually going to show up inside your rendering and so once I get my slab kind of figured out and see again because I didn't group my geometry I'm doing a whole bunch of fixing but once I get my slab kind of figured out I start working on this back balcony and this is probably the first time where I saved my model. I should have saved about a half hour sooner. And now what I'm doing is I'm coming in here and I'm adding this back balcony. And so what I do is I come in here and I start adding the stairs and I just use the push pull tool and create new face mode. So you tap the control key and what it'll do is it'll create a new face. So instead of moving that existing face, it'll create a new face when you move this down, which will kind of keep your stairs partitioned. And then I'm just gonna rough in the walls um, on here so there's walls that go along the side of the stair for where you walk down um, and those are all concrete walls and so I kind of had to expand the balcony a little bit. And most of that can be fixed using the uh, the push-pull tool. Um, I'm trying to apply materials as I go. Materials are really important when you're modeling for Lumion. And you can see how even these walls weren't lined up quite properly. I had to go in and fix those as well. But what I did is I went ahead and I, I used the push-pull tool to extrude these walls all the way around the perimeter so that I could quickly create them and apply that concrete material. So the whole look of this building is that it's sitting on a concrete wall. And so I'm trying to clean up materials as I go so that I don't have to do a whole bunch of material work on the back side. Um, I, can, I also came in here and I added some planner walls just by, uh, just by drawing a rectangle and then extruding it up and then using the offset tool. You can see how I'm adding the planter material inside the planters um, as I go. I'm probably going to put some rocks and maybe some little plants in there when I get over into Lumion. And then the other thing that I did, and you can see how one thing that I didn't do here before is I didn't actually have an opening into that room. So I had to go cut that opening. And then I added some balcony rails on the back side. And for that, I used an extension from Valley Architects, um, Instant Fence and Rail that I've talked about before. I really love that extension for adding railings. It makes that a lot easier. And so then the other thing I noticed is on the back side of my building, I hadn't modeled out any kind of glass or any kind of doors. There was actually no way to get into the building from the back side. So I had to go in and model that. And uh, e even with what I just drew using Lattice Maker, I had to go back in and fix that as well because there's really no door sized opening in what I drew. So again, this is probably one of my lazier models, but um, you can see how if, you, if you're willing to fix it, you can model it however you want. But if you're smarter about it, you can save yourself a lot of time um, in the future. 
And so you can see I'm kind of planning ahead with my materials. I'm adding that black material um, with the assumption that I'm actually going to replace that with some kind of metal panel material within Lumion. And um, so I'm just going in and fixing some things like walls showing up behind mullions. I'm thickening those. And you'll notice right here I actually have to go back in and remodel this wall because it didn't actually have a door-sized opening in here at all. But um, what I did is I just used Lattice Maker again in order to add that. And then I started working on the site stuff on this other side so I add a planter and uh, the material inside the planter so it's at this point it's pretty much just roughing out shapes and just breaking things up by material so that it'll be easy to edit once I get into Lumion so I'm gonna add in just a little bit more from a material standpoint and uh, the other thing I do is I break this up so I have a couple other little planting areas as well as um, some grass and an area where you can put cars so I mean probably not one of my better models but it'll definitely transfer to Lumion and I think we'll be able to create a really good rendering over there so make sure you go over and check out the render or youtube.com slash the rendering essentials um, to kind of follow along where I make that into more of a photorealistic rendering so that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Have you ever created a model and then realized you had to do a whole bunch of fixing because you didn't set it up right? Um, I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.